It's the first day of December, and what's a better way to start studying your Bible than today? Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Mache, and I make a variety of content ranging from my life as a technical theatre student to creative things to daily life and pretty much anything in between. I know how difficult it is to start reading your Bible, especially if it's your first time. And I've really been feeling it on my heart to start a little Bible talk content, but I never knew how to go about it. So I've been seeing those Vlogmas videos and I thought why not do something similar but Bible study edition. Warning, I am by no means a Bible or theology expert. Um, the things that I will be saying in these videos are purely my perceptions of what I'm reading along with guidance from other sources that I find. Take it with a pinch of salt but also feel free to comment your perceptions and your opinions down below because I would love to gain your perspectives as well. And I really hope that this can be a growing experience for you and for me. So without any further babbling, grab your Bible and let's get into the video. So today's reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, and I'm using the NLT translation, so your words might be a bit different. Let's get into it. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future where the Galilee and the Gentiles which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder, for you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms blood-stained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heavens and armies will make this happen. So let's first briefly summarize what we just read. So this extract, the prophet is describing a day within Israel's distant future where the gloom that it is currently experiencing will be lifted from its nation and the glory will return, aka Jesus will be born. And note all of the extracts within this week have to do with the prophecy of Jesus' birth because we are leading up to Christmas. How cute. <laughs> now that we have a brief little overview of what we just read, let's dig a little deeper, starting from the very beginning at verse 1. So verse 1 is actually a continuation of the previous verse of the previous chapter, where Isaiah is warning Judah of the invasions from Assyria, and this is described as the darkness or gloom in other translations. However, now in the first verse of a new chapter, there is this sense of hope because Isaiah is saying that this darkness will not last forever. So this is providing some hope that the situation they're currently in, it won't be that like that for much longer. Then we move on to verse 2, which is one of my favorite verses in this passage. And I have it highlighted yellow so that I can try to remember it because I feel like it really applies to our lives as well. So this verse refers specifically to the northern tribes who were the first to face the Assyrian invasion. However, due to God's mercy and fairness, they will also be the first to see the light. 
because they were the first to see the darkness. So while we are going through this study, think of and also comment down um, how today's content that we're reading can also be applicable to our lives because it's a living word, like everything somehow applies to us as well and how we live our lives as well. So verses 3 to 5 talks about the people's yoke to slavery being broken and this is talking about bondage and that kind of stuff like that being broken and the slavery could be in a literal sense but I personally think it's more in a spiritual sense as well. I mean how often are we slave to something that might not be a physical person, it could be our own desires or the outside pressures of the world and these kind of bondages put heavy burdens on our shoulders. Now I want to imagine this scenario. You have all these burdens, whether it be physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, all these burdens that are on your shoulders, um, but now imagine that you didn't know about Jesus, you didn't know about any hope of these burdens being lifted um, or any peace being restored. Now that is the life that many of these people faced because they didn't know about the birth of Jesus, it was only coming, the, the prophecy was only starting to come out and many people still today um, feel these burdens and this bondage because they haven't truly grasped the good news that Jesus, the Messiah, can lift these burdens from you and you can feel peace through him. Verse 4 talks about the army of Midian. Um, I had no idea what that was because I'm no Bible expert, so I did my research. So this verse refers to Gideon's great victory over the Midian army. And it is comparing this victory that Gideon experienced to the victory that the people will experience when um, the Messiah has his victory. Now after this, we finally get to the prophecy of Jesus being born. Let me read it again. For a child is born unto us, and a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So verse 6 mentions that the government will rest on his shoulders. Let's compare the governance of today, this governance that doesn't necessarily have Jesus in it, to the governance that Jesus has. I saw this like little sentence in an article and I think it is such a good sentence. Jesus looks what he can do for you, whereas the government looks what they can get from you. Now, that is so relatable, um, I mean not even within just the governments of South Africa, but most governments today, they make all these empty promises to get your vote, however when push comes to shove, they don't actually listen to what the people need, rather they look at what they need and their own um, selfishness and greed. The difference with modern day government and the governance of Jesus is that Jesus is our counselor. We can rely on him with our burdens and the deepest things that we have in our heart. And he has a direct um, communication with God and the Holy Spirit. He takes counsel with him. He makes peace between God and man. So he is the purest and most reliable governments a governance that we could ever ask for, um, which is why it's important to have his governance over our lives. So now that we have analyzed this section, what can we draw from it? Even in our darkest of times, where our burdens seem so heavy and our bondage is so strong and it seems that there's just no light in the world, Jesus is the light. He can set us free from these bondages, from these burdens that we are facing. We are privileged enough to live in a time where Jesus has already 
been born and has already died for our sins. We know this. It's not a prophecy. It's a fact. And now it is our responsibility to give him the reins to govern over our lives because he's the best form of governance that we could ever have. He is a passionate and a fair leader who has commitment to the Lord and therefore we are safe with him. Now, do bad things happen in the world and do we still have seasons of darkness? Of course, but just as the prophet Isaiah promises that darkness and despair will not go on forever. And that is the end of our first Bible study video. Wasn't that so much fun? Thank you for sitting through this whole video and going through this with me. It is just the first to many more um, amazing readings and revelations that we will get through. And to stay tuned to this series, please subscribe and make sure to put on your notifications so that you can be notified every day when the video is posted and you can do your Bible study. Also, please make sure to check the sources and things that I put down below because I found them really helpful to analyzing this scripture um, and it also just gave me a lot of context to what I was reading as well. Um, if you have any comments or questions or even corrections that you might think that I interpreted something wrong, please feel free to comment because I'm also still learning. Just make sure to keep your comments kind to everyone because we are all constantly um, learning and growing and we can't all be perfect in what we are saying. So just keep it kind, keep it respectful. And also make sure to comment your favorite point or verse or thing that you took away from this video. I would love to hear your perspectives and just to interact with this community. Have a beautiful and blessed day and I will see you tomorrow for day two of Bible study to Christmas. Goodbye.